because I'm her mother and it hurts deeply, you know, not knowing if she's alive or not. Bessie Handy of the Puyallup tribe has been missing for more than a year. I just don't know what to do. But the state attorney general and lawmakers have a new answer, a bill to raise awareness about the growing crisis of missing and murdered Native Americans in Washington. This will be the first indigenous missing persons alert in the country. The families cries for help are being heard. Will a new Amber Alert type system for Native Americans help reverse an alarming trend and bring loved ones home? Women like us are not safe. Bill sponsor, Representative Deborah Lakanoff and Yakima Nation activist Patricia Whitefoot weigh in. All life is considered sacred. Shining a light on the crisis of missing indigenous people in Washington, next on City Inside Out. Welcome to this edition of City Inside Out. I'm your host, Brian Callanan. It's a record no city wants, but studies show Seattle has the highest number of missing and murdered indigenous women of any urban area in the country, and Tacoma isn't far behind. State lawmakers are responding with a new bill that would create an Amber Alert type system to raise awareness about missing indigenous persons and hopefully reunite families with their loved ones. This program would be the first of its kind in the nation what advocates call an important step towards healing and justice in the face of a national crisis. What is scary to me about it is it's been too long. Connie Samuel's daughter, Bessie Ann Freedom Handy, was last seen February 1st, 2021 at the Sunshine Motel in Fife. The facts are clear. She's 35 years old, five foot two, 105 pounds, and a member of the Puyallup tribe, who may be in a mental health crisis. But what's going to be done about her disappearance is a mystery. Communication is, is, is just not happening. Everybody's not in on the same page. Bessie, a daughter, sister, aunt, and mother, is one of nearly 6,000 missing or murdered indigenous women and girls in the U.S. I just want you to go outside. The highest number of those cases in the country can be found in Seattle, where Deborah Juarez, the city's first Native American council member, passed legislation calling on city leadership to protect its vulnerable indigenous population in 2019. We're correcting and righting the historical wrongs of institutional oppression. Yet as Connie Samuels tries to speak up with law enforcement or local businesses about her daughter, she feels like her voice has been silenced too. Shut up about it. That's, that's the message we're getting. Oh, be quiet about it. With the help of a $2,000 reward from the Puyallup tribe, Connie still searches and posts flyers on her own, reminding us that her daughter's life and the lives of so many other missing indigenous people are worth saving. You can't just forget about people and just let them, you know, and just because people can't, are not going to forget about their kids and their family and their relatives. You can't just act like they don't exist. The state of Washington is trying to attack the problem of missing indigenous people, but it's a moving target. The really hard part of the crisis is that we don't fully know what's going on. Annie Forsman Adams is with the state attorney general's Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women and People Task Force. Even with public awareness of missing indigenous people on the rise, a 2018 report shows only 2% of those cases are in the federal missing persons database. There's not an equal amount of resources available when these things happen. That's why the AG's office has worked with lawmakers on House Bill 1725, which would create a system similar to Amber Alerts and give the state patrol and other law enforcement agencies some new publicity tools for missing indigenous person cases they haven't had before. And this bill helps to rectify that a little bit and break down some of those barriers by defining a missing indigenous person as a missing endangered person. It's our members. These are people. These are lives. Anna Bean of the Puyallup Tribal Council says the new bill could especially provide help for tribes in urban areas, close to major roadways like I-5, where missing people can be miles away in minutes. Time is of the essence when anybody comes missing. And there's a look back in time, too, as the tribe has worked with law enforcement to make sure members like Leona Sharon Kinsey, 
last seen in 1999, are added to the state's list of missing indigenous persons and not forgotten. It's devastating to not have answers, to find leads and not to get anywhere. The ultimate goal is recovery or to find justice here. The state's new program is one step towards justice and towards hope for the families of missing and murdered indigenous people who are trying to find a path forward after centuries of feeling there's been nowhere to turn. This is a place where we can stop that cycle. And I'm just hoping that we can we can get an answer somehow. The families' cries for help are being heard. And also those that are missing and murdered, I feel like their cries for help are being heard here too. And joining us to discuss this matter further, we have with us State Representative Deborah Lakanoff. She's the Democrat from the 40th District, which includes the San Juans, parts of Whatcom and Skagit counties. Representative Lakanoff, thank you very much for joining us. We also have Patricia Whitefoot, a retired educator and an activist from Yakima Nation. And Patricia, I wanted to start with you to really center up the lived experience of this. I think you have a very important story to tell, and I wanted to talk about this, your connection to the crisis of missing and murdered indigenous people. Would you share that with us, how that's impacted your family and Yakima Nation too? Mm -hmm. uh, definitely, thank you for this opportunity to share with you this morning. For me, when I take a look at this crisis, I always have to go back to the role of the explorers because of the oral history that has been shared with me by my elders and my ancestors. And so when I think about the explorers and colonizers on our homelands, you know, Nona today as the United States, we've been affected uh, by the missing and murdered people since that time. And during our treaty making era with the United States government in 1855, our people, our women and our children uh, face targeted, uh, you know, assaults and violence by the government officials, by the military, religion, religious organizations, and uh, inscrutable land grabbers. And in recent years, um, our tribal families and communities have increasingly been directly affected by the missing and murdered Indigenous women and people. Um, in our tribal communities in early fall of 1987, my youngest sister, Daisy Mayhe, who's Yakima Nation in Warm Springs, I went missing from my home in White Swan. And as a young woman, Daisy was a very energetic, active uh, individual who was full of life. And of the 40 or more people who've been missing or murdered on our reservation or nearby reservation area, uh, about six of them include women uh, from my family. And so, you know, as I take a look at this crisis, uh, you know, I have to recount, you know, our family history and the oral history, particularly that we have from our families as well. Thank you for sharing all of that. I know that's not an easy story to tell. Uh, Representative Lakanoff, I want to go to you. And before we talk about what Senate Bill 1725 is going to do for missing Indigenous people, I want to talk about a little bit more with the why here. Why did you sponsor this? And please help give us some perspective on this crisis. Thank you. Um, it's Thank you for having me here. Uh, my Thlicket name is Hikjasi. I come from a small village in Southeast Alaska. Just a little clinker girl living a, uh, come down into the lower 48. Um, you know, you are taught as a young woman, and my aunties are like Patsy, um, because of the way I look, uh, my almond-shaped eyes, my dark skin, my long hair. I'm a Native American woman whose life is in danger. There are thousands of young girls before me and thousands more young girls after me that have been told the same story, to be careful when you're coming out of the village, uh, to watch and look and to know that you in particular uh, are at more danger than most women in this world. And for me, it was important as my daughter is growing up uh, 18 and going off to college, uh, she has to have to have that talk of baby girl, you have to be careful. You have to watch where you go. Women like us are not safe. There are thousands of women from Anchorage to Seattle, to California, uh, to Helena, Montana, uh, to Bismarck, to New York, who look like us and sound like us that go missing and are murdered. And for us, it's a crisis. Uh, for me, it's taking care of all of the girls to come to make sure that they don't have to go without a sister, Patsy. 
They don't have to go without a daughter, an auntie. They get to be raised by their mother. And that's why this bill was so important for me, especially in Washington state. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And I wanted to make sure that I went back to you on this one, Representative Lakanoff, and talk about some of the nuts and bolts of 1725, which you sponsored. It's now passed the Senate and the House. It's on its way to the governor's desk. This has been called an Amber Alert type response for missing indigenous people. How does it work? So when we began the Amber Alert system, really the Amber Alert system is about taking care of ourselves, taking care of our Washingtonian families. You hear that alert and you know there is something, something's wrong. Uh, you have to get to safety. Um, you must be aware. And soon after, my wonderful colleague um, out of the House came up with uh, Representative Applegate, came up with the silver alert system, which helps those who we love so much, our elders with Alzheimer's. Right away when that comes across our phone, it comes across our TV screens, it comes across I-5 on, on the banners, the reading boards, we know to look out someone is missing and we as washingtonians we care we love our neighbors this is who we are as washingtonians when the broadcasters came to me and to the attorney general's office and stated we have an idea can we do this let can we help uh mmiwp alert system is going to come across the broadcasters uh, routed through the broadcasters and state patrol uh mm -hmm. the nuts and the bolts will be uh at the end of the day building the relationship at the tribal, local, state, and federal levels of public safety and broadcasters, and the hand across the yeah. mouth, those screamings, those screams will be heard across the system, and Washingtonians will rise up and know that someone that looks like me and sounds like me, uh, someone who looks like Patsy, they are missing. We need to find them, and that's what the intent of this is, to raise awareness. Got it. Thank you very much for that. Patricia, I'll go back to you. And I just wanted to think about how this measure might impact your advocacy work. The Yakima Nation co-hosted the first meeting of the state's Missing Indigenous Person Task Force last year. You serve on that task force. How is 1725 going to help the advocacy work that you do? Yeah. So I want to, first of all, just acknowledge the Senate who unanimously passed the final iteration of the bill mm -hmm. and, and, of course, was voted out by the House. And just as one individual who followed the bill throughout its term and provided both verbal and written testimony, I'm pleased, especially for the role of uh, Representative Deborah Lakana, the only Native woman in the legislature who provided critical leadership on this alert system. So I just want to acknowledge her for that role. It's important that we also call out the role of our women. Uh, because I've been involved with education over many, many years, um, I find that this bill will help increase awareness that American Indian and Alaska Native women and people even exist in the state and throughout the country. For too long, uh, we as Native people have been invisible or erased from existence by level by the various levels of governing institutions, policymakers, and the media. And uh, particularly with the media, there are often challenges as well in making certain that, you know, how we are represented is accurately represented. And unfortunately, we have to go back and um, correct some of the statements that are made of us. But also because I've worked in the school systems, um, our, our Native children are misidentified, underrepresented. Um, and not only just our children, but all Native people. Um, with with the passage of 1725, I think about uh, also my granddaughter, who when she was, before she was even in school, mm -hmm. you know, I had to, I trained her uh, to tell me what her name was. What What is your full name? You mm -hmm. know, tell me your name. And also tell me who your, what your father's name is, his full name your mother's full name. Mm. And she must have been about four years old when I talk, had this talk with her because of what had happened to my sister. And I, she had to memorize her phone number. She yep. had to memorize um, where she lived, mm. uh, her family, and the name of the community where she lived in, in White Swan, uh, similar to where I live. 
And yeah. so that's important as well. I think people don't recognize the fact that we do have this fear and that we also have to, you know, also educate our ba our babies about this crisis. Thank you. Very important points there for sure. Representative Lakanoff, I want to go back to you and talk about the role of law enforcement in your bill. So 1725 says the state patrol will set up this new alert system and smaller police agencies will voluntarily cooperate. I want to ask how you encourage police departments to do that. And I know I'm asking a delicate question here, but unfortunately, as you know, law enforcement in our state has a long history of bias against indigenous people. So I'm trying to ask that question of how you get police to fully buy in on this plan. I think uh, this, you know, these, the bill is very direct on eliminating and removing the genocide and removing the racism. Uh, I joined the Washington state legislature because one of my greatest goals was to enter like sweet grass, weave our governing bodies together. Missing and murdered indigenous women and people isn't just an Indian issue, right Patsy? It's not just an Indian issue. This is a crisis that impacts Washington state and public safety has that role of making sure, and I should know as a little girl hiding in the woods, running from my per perpetrator that someone is going to find me. I need to believe that the someone in the public safety sector, because the alert system has gone out, is going to find me. Mm -hmm. And I'll know my name. And when they find me, I'll know my mom's name, my dad's name, and where I'm from, and a phone number. Um, these are the teachings that Patsy passes down to her children. These are the teachings that I pass down. Public safety is a delicate conversation, but I believe, I believe with the intertwining like sweet grass of the relationship, from the tribal police who will engage with the local police and then with the state and federal police. There has to come a time when we look to the past and we acknowledge and realize that. We know what happened, but this is a time for Washington state to rise and for the public safety to rise and they want to. Uh, the training that's being done of how to work with our, our families because we are, we are very scared. When a police officer comes to knock at your door and he doesn't look like me or sound like me, I'm don't right. I'm not quite sure if I want to open up that door because we're fearful of the police. We need to eliminate that and open the door and allow the police officers to come in, gather the information so they can find my auntie, my mom, or my daughter. Right, uh, Patricia. Same question to you. Do you think local law enforcement agencies will be cooperating voluntarily with Senate Bill 1725? How's that process going to go? Well, I, I think it's also important to recognize that we've worked on uh, previous state legislation to hire two tribal liaisons with the Washington State State Patrol, which calls for these uh, liaisons to prioritize their work with the tribes in eastern and western Washington. I was also involved in the interview of the individuals hired. And so that's important. That's a first for us to be even involved in that process with the State Patrol. And so we're making inroads. The other piece is that, you know, with the federally, the 29 federally recognized tribes in our state, you know, mm -hmm. along with the regional tribes we work with, uh, we have a very unique, diverse population in land. And it's, for me, it's imperative as this legislation moves along that, you know, our treaties, our executive orders, agreements with the United States government are upheld and recognized. And so, the, the bill also calls for training. And so, you know, in work that we do with the Governor's Office of Indian Affairs and you know, other entities to provide government to government training and consultation. And in our discussions, we've also shared that we also need to pay attention to what goes on at the federal level with Congress and the various laws that are in place. And so it means an alignment. And so as you know, governing institutions for law enforcement, they have to do the same thing. All governing institutions have to do that. And so I see us working to align with one another. I've been hopeful in the work that we've been doing with the Washington State uh, uh, Patrol, which has been positive. While it has also not been positive in the past, um, I think this is a step in the right direction. And I also just wanna say that you know, like Deborah said earlier, violence occurs not only among our families, but it also incurs among our governing institutions, mm. law enforcement, and the diverse sectors of mainstream society. I've witnessed that, and I've been a party to some of that violence and assault mm. that occurs, unfortunately, 
in our governing institutions. And so we have to continue to work toward breaking down those, those kind of issues. Got it. Thank you for breaking down those issues with me right here. Very important to hear those things. I wanted to make sure I went back to you on this one, Representative Lukanoff. This bill recognizes missing and murdered Indigenous persons, not just women. I know a lot of focus on this issue over the past few years has involved missing women and girls. Why did the language change in this legislation? Um, we have so much analysis and facts at the federal level and at the state level of the impact of women. If you recall, going back to Patsy's earlier uh, um, description, this has been happening since time immemorial for us, all the way back to the colonization of women, our women being um, taken, raped, killed, enslaved. Um, but we're also the trend that's happening with the people, the Native American people, um, our, our men, our children, the same abuse is happening and has continuing to increase with them, especially during these racist years of where uh, our communities have really struggled with one another. And now really recognizing this need in this time of healing that every life matters, every life matters. And our Native American people have been invisible. Uh, where were we when our children were being stolen, our, our families being, um, our, our sons being beaten, our women being raped? Where, where were the broadcasters? Where was Washington State Patrol? Why is this just now coming out today? Again, we pause and we say we can recognize the past. We acknowledge it. We must move forward. Um, I think one of the, we were talking about intertwining why this yes. is so important. Um, I witnessed uh, something that I'll never forget when I was doing public testimony last year on missing and murdered Indigenous women. This is the value of having uh, Patsy guiding me as an auntie and as a leader herself. Uh, Patsy walks into the hearing room to testify on missing and murdered Indigenous women and people in her regalia with her little, her little granddaughters behind her. Mm -hmm. Patsy came and testified, gave me a quick hug, and she said, I'm going to Oregon because they're doing the same bill down there. Mm -hmm. And Patsy jumps in the car with her, her, little, her little nieces, and they race to the Oregon State Legislature within that same days. Wow. Because missing and murdered indigenous women and people recognize no border. Mm -hmm. they, we have our brothers and sisters to the north in Canada uh, calling down to us. Have you seen her? We call Tulela, Piala, Umatilla, Warm mm -hmm. Springs. Have you seen her? Uh, mm -hmm. This is how we're going to be able to eliminate um, uh, this crisis is by coming together more collectively and knowing that this is going to take all government. Thank you. And Patricia, I just want to make sure I followed up with you. This idea of broadening the bill, using the phrase missing indigenous persons alert, what does that mean to you? When I think about that, I think about, you know, the teachings that I've had from my own elders and as a tribal people, life is considered sacred. All life is considered sacred. Mm -hmm. From the time a child comes into the world, you know, similar to my granddaughter, you know, we had ceremony for her when she was an infant and we placed her in the cradle board. So it's understood that all life is sacred regardless of our gender, our identity, our race, or our status. All life is sacred. Yeah. Wherever my sister was last located, you know, I think about that. And I've come to realize it's important to understand one of my sister's words that helps to strengthen my resolve about this. She's been, I take her with me whenever I go someplace to share about missing and murdered indi indigenous people. Mm -hmm. And she's more recently began sharing uh, that the land cries out where the sacred blood of life flows on the land. And it's the same sentiment and feelings that I've had as well. Yeah. You know, the land cries out where the sacred blood of life flows on the land and and when she began saying that i was thinking we're thinking alike and my sister is a, a is a cousin but she also had a sister that was murdered as well and so i think it's important for us to all you know remember that we're all working toward resolution absolutely we need to start wrapping up the show thank you so much for this discussion pa uh, patricia maybe i can start with you we're talking about a bill here that represents a small but very important step in raising awareness about this crisis of missing and murdered indigenous people here also a larger issue about equity we can't get away from that either here but i'm trying to ask this bigger question of what impact 
do you hope a program like this is going to have in our state and in our country in the months and years ahead? Okay, so it is, it's my hope that families who report, you know, family members to law enforcement are not subjected to no response or no communication regarding their missing loved one. With this alert system, families will know that action can be t made to immediately locate or identify their family members. And this is one way that communication and collaboration on all levels can be elevated and improved to address this need. I, I certainly hope so. Representative Lakanoff, I'll wrap up with you some final thoughts on what you think the effect Senate Bill 1725 is going to have in our state, maybe in our nation as we look towards the future. I can give you about a minute. We're really excited to have um, this opportunity to, to unleash those unheard screams that we've heard with this missing and alert system. The, uh, across the nation, we're collaborating with Secretary, Department of Interior, Deb Holland's office to work and incorporate what this model would look like for those other states who want to be able to incorporate this. We're also working with the uh, uh, Canadian First Nations, which represents all of the First Nations up north, to be able to take a look at what an alert system would look like. They have no alert system up there for anything, no crisis, but this could be the first there. Uh, we recognize that uh, this is also through the Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women's Peoples. We want to send our appreciation to Attorney General Bob Ferguson and to Secretary, uh, I'm sorry, Senator Makadingra uh, mm -hmm. for their leadership as my co-sponsor of the bill. Uh, the AG's office put together the Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women's and Peoples Task Force, mm -hmm. which is looking at data sharing, looking at um, uh, working uh, in between governing bodies, uh, training for these type of programs, and then working in collaboration uh, to bring Washingtonians together to address this all for now and for the next generations to come. Absolutely. Thank you both for your input on this. And we will be right back. What are people saying on social media about the crisis of missing and murdered indigenous people? One person writes, this is active violence against us and our community. Another person says, our women and girls are not expendable. We'd like to know what you think. Send us an email at contact at seattlechannel.org or find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Coming up next time, a look back at the 2022 legislative session. What did lawmakers accomplish and where did they fall short? We bring you a recap on the next City Inside Out. I hope you join us.